Good morning. Today I want to show you how you can uh, test-driven develop a class using JUnit to help you develop a class from its specification. You always, of course, start uh, writing a specification and then code to that specification. This is the specification of my simple rental class, which is about renting or leasing um, items like cars and bikes and houses and rooms and whatever, things that you want to be able to, to rent. That is, you want to uh, use the, the item between the start date and the end date, including the end date. Um, of course, you have to pay some price and the price per item is specified in the rental item itself. So that determines how much uh, the price will be. And uh, the rental itself will specify a start date and end date. Of course, in a typical contract, you also have the, uh, the person that leases the object, that uh, name and address and all, all, all kind of things like uh, passport number. But I left that out because that is not really needed to demonstrate what you can do with test-driven development. So what do we need to do? You simply need to uh, create uh, classes and test classes. Test driven means that you write your tests first and you can derive your tests from your specification. Specification is there's a rental item and there's also a rental object. Because the purpose of this demonstration is to um, develop a rental first, I'll simply start with that. Test driven means writing your test first, so what I do, I write a test. Convention is that you name the test after the object that you want to test, but uh, post, fix, or add, append to that name the, uh, the four letters test, T-E-S-T -E with a capital T. I simply uh, do it like this. You get a class and uh, a lot of typing is already done for you. I typically leave that out because it's not very useful. And then the rest is fine. My name is in, in, in. that's what I like. There's also a constructor in there that's not really needed, so I simply remove all this stuff. What I do is I write a unit test. Unit test is done like this. I did this with a macro, but that's not a very. This is what I want to specify. I want to rent the object for one day. Um, renting the object for one day uh, means that I have to have a rental. And to be able to make a rental, <coughs> I need to specify a start date and an end date, but also the item that I want to rent. So the first thing I really need is a rental item. Item. Um, well, you see that the NetBeans says, whoa, this is wrong. See, red line, danger. But it also provides a bulb. And that bulb means that NetBean has an idea on how to solve this. It has three poss possibilities to solve this. The top one is make a re rental item in the current package, but also in the test packages that is in the same folder over here. The bottom one is to make a, a class, an inner class inside this rental test. That is not what I want. Neither do I want this one. I want the middle one. I want to make, to have NetBeans to make a real business object. And look what happens if I click this one and you'll see this package light up because now it contains something. It contains this rental item object. Here's a nice new class that has been created without typing, typing a letter. You will notice that I'm a bad typer and uh, in this way I can also avoid uh, to demonstrate that too often because it gets really boring. Now, now we have a rental item. We can specify the start and end date and in modern Java you specify dates in using local date. Not the old date but local local date, start date, and uh, local date, end date. And uh, you see that, uh, you, again, you get really red lines. It says danger, danger, but it's simply resolved by importing the proper package, our proper class, the local date class. <coughs> that is now being done over here. Now let's say, simply say, I want to rent a good today. You can specify a local date and you can also specify here uh, uh, start date. Let's see what we can do here. Plus 
Oh, well, let's uh, add a temporal amount or a long amount and a temporal unit. Let's uh, add days to add. Let's, let's do it like this, plus days, which is simple. So let's specify that the date is on tomorrow. Well, so we have one day of rent and it's starting and, and they differ by one. You can simply uh, compute that by doing something like this, uh, end date uh, dot minus, and then you can do temporal amount. No, that's different. Minus, no, I don't see that. That's not not uh, not very important. These are two dates I want. So this is a uh, this is the dates the the, um, the rent starts today and it's tomorrow. Well, um, then the rental item uh, it's 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 specified. That is, I declared it, but I didn't introduce it yet. Yeah. Um, let's uh, let's uh, make that and. Um, Oops, spelling error again. This is a rental item. Now you see that I get, uh, oops, I get uh, a squeaky line again. It says, okay, use this constructor, it's fine, it's fine. But um, there's one little thing, as you can see in my plan, I want this rental item to be an interface, not just a class. And you see that what uh, NetBeans produced is a class. So let's uh, in turn this into an interface really simple yeah and ha give this interface the method that um, that is required well now it says you can't uh, create an instance of an interface but there's a small trick that you can always apply you can simply add curly braces to it and then it's okay it's an interface with an anonymous it will produce an anonymous class and the instance of this class will be called it now um, now I'm about to uh, to start coding my real class because now I know that I have all the ingredients to put in this into the object of this class, the instance of this class, and I create can create one. So I create rental and spell it properly, of course. Typing is an issue here. Rental, rental is new, rental, and uh, what I'll pass in is the item, uh, start date, and the end date, and that's about it. Now, you get three, two squiggly red lines. One is, there's no such object, create a class rental, not in the test packages, in the source packages, please, there you go. A proper class, just fine. Second red thing is now you look at this lamp again and see what it uh, now says. It says there is no constructor yet. So shall I make one? Of course. Go ahead. And in the rental class, it now has con uh, created a constructor. NetBeans does little work for you, but not all, not all of it, because well, when it creates a constructor, it will insert one line that says, well, this constructor is not really a real constructor. So if you invoke this constructor, you get an ex exception thrown in your face. Simply remove that. What I want this constructor to do is simply save the passed in parameters, the item, the start date and the end date as uh, fields in this class. So what I do is say the uh, item, item, no, I can't complete that, is item. And then it says, okay, I make a field for you. I say it, uh, this dot end date, date is end date. And I like my start date to be first. Uh, this dot start date uh, equals start date. And uh, let NetBeans do the typing for me again. So that's simple enough. Yes? So. I haven't typed, I have typed a little bit, but almost nothing. You see, now 
here the compiler and uh, NetBeans are satisfied. It says there's a rental object now. You don't use it yet. That's why this uh, gray squiggly line is over here. Now let's uh, let's uh, do the thing that it's all about. I want to compute the cost. Yes. So um, to be able to do that, I must be able to verify the cost with uh, the rental item thing. But uh, let's just specify the cost I want. I want the cost to be 10 euros, so a thousand cents for one day. And uh, <coughs> that is what I expect. Yeah, so expected, expected equals 10 euros. I write it like that. like to write it like this because it's really, uh, really easy. And the actual in uh, actual cost equals, well, from the rental dot get cost. Oops. Get oh, rental get cost. Again, you see NetBeans has a suggestions for me, and that is simply uh, add a method. Again, looking into rental, you see it has added a cost method. Now, I've removed this uh, exception thrown, and now Nebby says, hey, hey, oh, you made a method that uh, returns an int, but you don't. So please return an int. Let's simply return an int. Zero is uh, just an int as any other, just as good as any other. So now that we have done this. And uh, let's see what happens. Well, nothing yet, because I don't use expected nor actual. I should compare them. Actually, I should compare them for equality because what I expect is what I want. To do that, I add an assert statement, assert statement a J unit assert, in this case an assert equals, because I want to verify that the expected value and the actual value are the same, are equal. How do I do that? First, I specify a message. This is uh, not so very useful a test, uh, text, but it helps um, uh, me to show what you should specify. That is a message when things go wrong. So this message is produced by JUnit whenever this test does not pass, when the test fails. So what I must do, I must write expected first in this variant of uh, JUnit, uh, the expected value first and the actual value second. And now the compiler is uh, satisfied again because it knows that there is a method called uh, assert equals in the JUnit package and it will invoke that. That's uh, nicely formatted. And now I have my first te test method ready and running. Yeah? So let's uh, run the test. Let's see what happens. Ha! A beautiful red. 